Hello, hello everyone. We are jumping in to a match in top 16 here. I am Binks and I'm joined by Shiva. Shiva, how are you doing today? Doing well, doing well, having a great time at the tournament. Excited about these matches. They've been uh, some close ones, a little bit of back and forth. So uh, excited to be here and, and uh, just see some great snap being played. Oh yeah, we're sweating here at SnapCon. We are sweating. There have been some really, really competitive games. A lot of things going super late into the rounds. Not too many, uh, you know, snap, snap back, going into eight cubes. And we are what looks like game one with Chaos Pro versus Prey Sean. Tell me what we're seeing with these decks here. This is our first time getting a look at them. Yeah, I know uh, I was talking to Chaos Pro a little bit kind of before the matches, and I know he was regretting not putting Enchantress in the deck. So <laughs> I'm excited to see how that how that's been working out for him. Clearly, it's been working well. Uh, we're in top 16 at the point at this moment. So yeah, excited to see uh, what these decks bring to the table. Um, but yeah, I know I know Chaos Pro was regretting not bringing Enchantress, but it seems to be working for him. Yeah, we, we got some interesting stuff. Preshawn with the Hawkeye in the deck. What an interesting one drop to add there. Uh, you know, one, one energy, four power, not too bad. It looks like he has a, uh, you know, Kitty Shuri deck that's looking to use things like Hulkbuster and Forge to get a nice big Kitty. Uh, play that Shuri down on turn four and then finish off with a Kitty into Taskmaster. Also has the Vision there for a little bit of space and the Chavez as well. Uh, and yeah, I, I like Chaos Pro's list here. I think that these uh, Sarah, more, more kind of uh, old school like Sarah monkey type builds are, are a really good spot and he has the the, the Dakin in, and Colleen wing combo that I think is really, really interesting. Yeah, I, I agree. And I think, uh, you know, just looking at the decks, uh, the versatility that we have with just like being able to Shuri, like you mentioned, like Kitty Pride, Hulkbuster, Shuri, Taskmaster, right? With uh, with with Chaos Pro running a, a Killmonger in his deck, it's not necessarily a guaranteed thing, right? You, know, you have to put it behind the armor, things like that. But being able to still, you know, Shuri a vision and then Taskmaster and move it, you know, there's a lot of versatility that we can do with that. Uh, it does kind of diminish the value of the Hawkeye a little bit unless you have to, unless you put it behind the armor. But um, I think both decks look very interesting here. I'm always a fan of Sarah, so uh, seeing Sarah on the field is always exciting. But um, yeah, lots of lots of things that we can do here. Obviously, Shang Chi on turn six is going to be you know big for Chaos Pro. Whatever's not behind the armor, um, so lots of lots of interesting things that we should see here. Yeah, what I, what I'm looking at that I really like is I feel like this is going to be a war of priority. Understanding how to deal with priority on that final turn. Both decks are kind of look like they're trying to throw priority because you know you're getting that kitty, but it's going to jump back into your hand over in Prey Sean's deck. You're pretty much just going to be looking to drop down that Sarah on turn five, so hopefully not having priority. And again, yeah, if they're trying to go for any kind of kitty strategies, Chaos Pro has the Killmonger and is able uh, to to manage to to throw priority. It's going to be a nightmare situation to 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 try and win multiple lanes at the very very end of the game. Yeah, I always love the the priority mini game where it's like, okay, I need to put enough power on the field where I'm not behind but also just enough to not have priority, uh, especially in a matchup like this where priority is really going to determine some of these games more than likely. Um, I do like with the Raft coming down, uh, the Kitty being able to you know play it there and then not be locked down in that location. So uh, pretty pretty big for Kitty Pride in the Raft there, and it looks like we did fill that up. Um, so a free Thanos zero, coming in. Zero hand. cost Odin could do some really nasty things with both the Forge and if he's able to find a Shuri. Um, really interesting potential things there. And then we just have the, the big block of stats for, for Thanos over down at, uh, for Chaos Pro. Turn five, no Sarah though. Uh, always, always an interesting thing to keep our eye on because he's going to be a little bit light on what he's trying to do. But the Raft is also really good for the Hip Monkey. You know, that zero, zero 010 is not only incredibly powerful, but it's also going to do another two power to that Hip Monkey that can really, really change the game th for the end. Yeah, no, I agree. I mean, I mean, turn six right now with just Mysterio Thanos hit monkey is already already pretty big, uh, and we do see the Killmonger come down to give some extra energy as well. Um, so now that that's down, and, and again, kind of like we expected, the the Hawkeye being behind the armor, so it's protected from that exact play, and, and then Kitty Pride also surviving that Killmonger there with the Hulkbuster on it now. So um, Odin hitting the Forge too here, hopefully trying to top deck that test. Uh, I guess with Chavez, you're you're not going to get it. So yeah, or I mean, even just the the extra power Captain Marvel for the movement if you need it, uh, isn't, isn't the worst uh, line of play either. So um, yeah, and it looks like we're going into turn six here and priority has been established. Okay, Chaos Pro does have the priority, which means any big thing that, that comes down is going to stick because uh, Shang-Chi is going to be flipping first. So um, it looks like we do see uh, potentially a retreat coming in here. 
Yeah, it's going to be tough. I think Preshawn's really happy that the, it was the Odin there to not only get that Forge Trigger, so you get 11 total power out of it, uh, but also it's something that's going to be a little bit hidden. Also, obviously, can get away from Shang-Chi, which I think is, is really important. Uh, final turn. He was thinking about retreating, but, but it looks like he's going to go for it. Uh, we have the Mysterio, Thanos, and a, and a Hitmonkey coming out. The Hitmonkey's going to come down to 8 power. Uh, depending on where this kitty lands, though, winning that right side is going to be a little bit tough here. Yeah, and, and I think maybe playing the Odin uh, a turn early might have been not necessary, right? Because you can still Odin the first turn uh, or the first card on turn six and still trigger it. Uh, but knowing what your free zero, what your free six cost card is, is, is pretty big information as far as like how to play this last turn. So Absolutely. I'm not sure if if the Odin on turn five was the the right thing, but I, I, I get why we wanted that extra forge trigger for sure. Chaos Pro switching to the Thanos right, which I think is I think is really oh, he's maybe maybe going to retreat here. I think that the I think that the Thanos right was really good. I mean uh, the the Kitty coming down there on the right at 14 power. Both of them have Angelos. Was actually going to be able to squeak out that right side by a little bit with the Bishop triggers as well. Um, but maybe just not confident that he's going to be able to win the the left and middle lanes there. Uh, pulls away for a four cube loss, which is going to be tough. A lot a lot of ground he has to get back here. Yeah, that's a that's definitely a big loss coming in. I I, I didn't see for sure if that was going to be an eight cube game or not. So maybe that was like, you know, we'll see worth risking the entire round on it. Mm -hmm. um, but we do see the retreat come in there. So um, it, it's turn six is always so interesting with Sarah decks in general. And especially now with like both of them having zero cost six drops and then having a Shuri kitty, like all of these things like make for really interesting turn sixes. And so uh, tough, tough turns to play out when both ha players have so much still in the reserve for that last turn. So I understand the hesitation there. Yeah, it's tough going. Hulkbuster onto the Hawkeye, just making a nine power one drop, just sitting there, maybe kind of trying to dangle it out and going to follow it up with an armor, maybe trying to bait out a Shang-Chi. I think that could be pretty crazy uh, if they were able to get it. The Angela getting pulled over to the right is going to be annoying with Asgard. Uh, I wonder if this. I wonder if this is a Shang Chi. It looks like he is. He's, he's trying to bait the Shang Chi over there on the left. Very, very, very interesting play line. I've. I mean, I don't know. I've never seen Hawkeye and a Hulkbuster. I don't know about you. This is super cool. <laughs> yeah, Hawkeye and Hulkbuster is not something you see every day. So, we, you know, if you, it depends on how much you want to draw the cards, um, because obviously, you know, you can always. You're worried about maybe armor coming down to protecting it, but you do have the Killmonger to handle that later, uh, and you might need the Shang-Chi for like the big vision or Taskmaster, or, mm -hmm. or you know if they forge vision things like that. So, um, I'm not, it just depends on how much you want to draw the cards. How much are you willing to invest into that location to draw the cards? It's such a good bait because you're just—I mean, you're just dangling it out there. Like you—you you can destroy this whenever you want, <laughs> man. You can destroy it. It's uh, very interesting, and, and I really like the the play line there by Preshan. So going into this turn, it looks like Dakin's going to come down on the left. Obviously, not going to be enough to get. Asgard, so just kind of throwing it doesn't. I guess the only way he could be was was with the Shang Chi, but um, oh, he's yeah, he's gonna he's gonna send it. I think you have to, right? You still want to draw your Sarah for turn five, so like having the ability to. Uh, but we do not have the Cryo and armors coming down, so um, we will not be uh, <laughs> winning that location. So I, I get the the urge to look, win that location though to draw the Sarah on turn five, so that you have a better turn six, but. Um, not having Pryo there uh, was, was unfortunate. You know, sometimes when people give you the bait, you, j you just have to take it, and it never feels good, but so, like sometimes, you know, they they could be dangled and, and um, you, you know, they're, they, they don't have anything to follow it up, and it was, it was more just, you, you know, trying to think that next level past uh, what your opponent's going to do that, uh, you know, when we get into these top 8, top 16s of these uh, really sweaty tournaments like we've seen uh, is, is going to happen. Yeah, and I think with Nowhere being a location in this match, like, you have to play Kitty Pride there, essentially, right? Like, you can't, there's a lot of cards you can't play there because it's Nowhere. Mm -hmm. um, like, you don't really want to play the Hit Monkey there, you can't play Doc in there, like, different things. And so, um, having Kitty Pride just now being returned to hand, I think, is a, a little unfortunate, but we can still win Nowhere with a couple different ways. I think Hit Monkey um, uh, is going to be big here as well. But,. Uh, I don't know. This hand, just based on the hands here, it's uh, it's not looking great uh, for for Chaos Pro here. I think Preshan has a lot more available to him on this turn, but we'll see how uh, we'll see how it plays out. It's gonna be hard to win a second lane, right? I mean, yeah. no Kitty coming down. Obviously, he doesn't know the hand to, to know if Kitty mm -hmm. had, had come into hand in the last couple of turns. But you have to, you you should know that there's no Kitty, right? Because you'd go Kitty Shuri mm -hmm. almost certainly on turn five there. So so maybe he. Uh, has a bit of a read here. I think it's so hard if you're Chaos Pro to, to take a loss here. I think yeah. 
I think you just kind of have to go for broke, and it, and it feels terrible sometimes when, uh, you, you know, you take an L. But yeah, I mean, I, mean, I, th I think that you have to do it. Ooh, may maybe missing uh, power here if he if he gets the killmonger before the calling wing. So yeah, maybe you can make an adjustment uh, yeah, beforehand. I, there's definitely a way to win. You know, for both both players here. I'm with you. I don't think it's worth the. Yeah, I mean, it's the whole tournament, I guess, so it's, it's a lot of pressure. I think I'd probably play that one out there. I think there's a shot. I don't think either, like, had it, the game, like, completely locked up, but uh, with, with so much on the line and, and it being, like, potentially the last game, so. Interesting, the, the play there was probably to just not play the Killmonger or, or even, like, somehow, like, playing the Killmonger and then playing the Muramasa Shard to not destroy it, which seems so counterintuitive. <laughs> But I mean, you, you have to think like, what what could they possibly have in the hand if they don't have the kitty? Right. They have the shuri down. Right. You know, maybe they play a vision on top of that. But that would be all that they would play there. Or maybe the Captain Marvel comes down and uh, they they have a little bit more flexibility. Uh, definitely a hard hard thing to work through. And and Chaos Pro just says, hey, you know, I'm gonna try and beat you. I'm gonna try and beat you five times. I wasn't confident there to uh, to to risk the whole tournament. Yeah, with uh, Chaos Pro being eight cubes down at this point, it, it's looking pretty rough. But I've come back from worse. I'm sure we all have, right? So. <laughs> Um, it's, it's, we're definitely not out of this yet. Uh, and I, and I agree, right? Uh, especially with a deck like, uh, like what we're seeing here, you know, quasi Sarah control, basically, basically Sarah control. Um, it's, it's looking, it's possible, right? Anything's possible with that deck. And so, um, yeah, we'll see what we can do here. I think Baxter building is going to be a highly contested location this game for sure. Um, so we'll see how, we'll see how this, uh, how this plays out. Bishop and Angel, unfortunately, going in the wrong order. Mm -hmm. But you, you know, you can't pick your top decks. You just got to deal with what you got. Yep. Uh, and we also notice. I mean, we see the Sarah in hand here, mm -hmm. the Pixel Sarah, which is a hilarious thing to have <laughs> in your deck. Uh, but uh, the Sarah coming down here. I mean, the last three games, I don't think we we saw Sarah. Uh, maybe maybe the first one. So, you, you know, without that Sarah, the, these decks just tend to feel really really hard to win on that final turn. You know, you're used to playing four big cards, making big swingy plays, maybe doing some tech things, but. You know, with no Sarah, you play two cards. It just mm -hmm. it, it's, it feels pretty darn rough. Uh, so so we'll, we'll see. Now that he has the Sarah available, uh, lots of tools. Bishop and Angela both uh, plastered down there on, on Baxter building, uh, really wanting to win that location. Uh, let's, let's see if he can he can make a way to, to or find a way to make it work. Yeah, I agree. I was just about to say the same thing, right? With Sarah in hand, we haven't seen Sarah a lot this this which uh, this like round, which is, you know, like you said, tough to win without that Sarah. I mean, it, it really brings the deck together. Um, you know, I, I do think, I know we hovered Sarah left. I do think Sarah Hell's Kitchen is what I would be doing here. I think it gives you some power there, makes it not as easy to win, you know, cuts that lead down. And so. Throwing um, priority is huge, too. You mm -hmm. know, you know that the uh, if your opponent's running Kitty and, and you, you know, end up playing that Killmonger next mm -hmm. turn, you know, they have to play it left. They literally don't have a choice unless they, they want to get uh, uh, completely torn apart. Exactly. Uh, and on the side of Prashan, I do love the uh, Hulkbuster middle because you don't really care who it goes on at that point. If it yeah. goes on Captain Marvel, great. If it goes on Jeff, great. So we got options. Yeah, exactly. Options. It's uh, the best fifty-fifty you could uh, you could ask for. <laughs> Oh, almost, okay. got, almost yeah. going kitty in the <laughs> kitty in the kill longer. Not not ideal. Held, held my breath there for a second. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, it's gonna be a pretty darn big hit monkey that's that's slamming down middle. Bishop's gonna get big. Angela's gonna continue getting big there. Uh, the Captain Marvel at ten power though is is so intimidating. You know, you win middle, and even if you win middle and you get that extra three, that looming presence of Captain Marvel being yep. able to jump right or left is is just a menace. Yeah, uh, and I don't I don't know what Prey Sean's play is here. It, it looks like. Uh, he played the Taskmaster to, to cover the Captain Marvel, which is going to be the best play, you know, looking at the Chavez. Um, I, I guess there's no reason to play the Rock, right? Uh, right. So we'll see if, if he slams it down middle. Maybe he slams it down right to try and have the Captain Marvel jump up and, and, and catch over on the right as well. Uh, but when, once they flip the middle, they're, he's going to need a little bit of extra power left. Otherwise, it's, uh, it's, it's going to be a six-point flip uh, as the Baxter building gets taken over. Maybe he just, I mean, maybe he just slammed it middle too, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And um, yeah, it's going to be interesting here. I, I I do think competing over the left in middle is what I, where I would be at as well. Because um, again, you know that they're going to play something big over on the right. Uh, the left is a little easier to win. But again, that Captain Marvel is is it doesn't matter sometimes. So. So we're going to need 10 total power to get added left to be able to sneak away from this Captain Marvel jumping over. Uh, the X-23 going left might be incredibly important here. Who lands over on the right? Is that Kitty at 
high power what it needs. Oh, and he's going to be able to get it. Just just ties and just there gets enough is. by a single point over there on the left to stop the Captain Marvel. Just make her do a little dance, not actually get over to the yeah. side. Huge, huge turn there. And that's the, you know, that's what we're waiting to see with that Sarah, right? That's only possible if we draw the Sarah there. And so having the Sarah that game allows us to have like big turn sixes like that. And so um, two cubes coming off of Preshawn, closing the gap slowly but surely. Uh, so yeah, great game there. I think both players played that extremely well. And, and I think Sarah is definitely going to be the key differentiator in this matchup, right? Like if we draw it or if we don't, is going to be determine, you know, how, how well the rest of the series goes. Pete giving Chaos Pro a pre-nerf Bastard hit monkey, very scary, and, and does a little bit of damage to both Armor and Captain Marvel, but kind of even damage to the deck and Colleen Wing. I would call that peak a, a bit even, but oh man, a 2-3 hit monkey is, that is, a, that is something you can hold in your back pocket that might be terrifying later. Yeah, I completely agree. And, um, you know, we're still on the draws for Sarah, not in hand yet, but um, yeah, I, I agree. I think... Uh, just having Captain Marvel Taskmaster armor in hand, it's looking, uh, and there's the Shuri, right? So we have we have kind of the core cards that you need on, on Preshawn's side. And so, um, yeah, it's gonna be interesting to see what our, our, how our draws come out and if we can draw that, uh, draw the Sarah. Yeah, Sarah definitely gonna be needed over over from Chaos Pro. Uh, Preshawn probably looking to, uh, if they get a key next turn, you could maybe make something work with the Forge, but. He's got nothing to buff right now. I mean, mm -hmm. maybe he just plays the Shuri and hopes for a top deck vision. I think a top deck vision can be a really, really strong if he's able to get that. We, we, we slam the vision, get 16. Taskmaster, another 16. So it's going to be a huge top deck uh, for, for, for Preshawn. Yeah. Maybe just to get the Hulkbuster here, not what he was looking for. But no. I guess Hulkbuster into Taskmaster can do, do some, some stuff. Yeah, potentially. Especially if it lands on the Angela, right? Because then the Taskmaster would be, what, 20 power? Yeah, I, I, I was just thinking that same thing, right? I think Hulkbuster gives you the best best shot here, right? I think Captain Marvel is maybe safer, but it's not as powerful. The ceiling's a lot lower on, on that play. But um, yeah, because if you hit the Angela, I mean, it's kind of, you have to hit the Angela, which is, you know, 33% at this point. Uh, but if you hit the Angela with that Hulkbuster and then you're able to Taskmaster, I think that that, like, that is pretty big. Interesting choice here. It looks like Chaos Pro might be trying to ramp, you know, with the lack of Sarah. Maybe just trying to play the Killmonger out this turn. Um, he doesn't have priority, so maybe he's looking to, like, snipe a, a sneaky kitty play or, or something like that. Uh, but it's going to be tough. I mean, again, just uh, you got to feel for, for a Sarah deck that just is having so much trouble trouble pulling the Sarah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. And I, I think I'm with you on that one. I think I'd kill Monger here to get more energy next turn to kind of a little compensate a little bit at least mm -hmm. uh, for not drawing the um, for not drawing the Sarah. But actually running out of time, so I'm not sure if that's exactly how... Chaos Pro wanted that turn to go, but at least we got something on the field. So yeah, you got you got to make some kind of play, right? Mm -hmm. And there's there's a couple ways that you could look at trying to play this for Chaos Pro. Obviously, um, your hope can just be to be ahead by more than eight, right and left, uh, or right right and middle, and and that's gonna be really hard. That Captain Marvel is is, is simply simply looming there against you. Mm -hmm. um, Chaos Pro's looking a little frustrated right now, and I think that's understandable. It's just, it's such a hard position to be mm -hmm. in to, uh, to, to get uh, enough, or I guess you maybe are looking to, to push left. Oh man, with just a Shang-Chi and a, and a Hit Monkey to be able to play this turn, it's it's looking really grim to, to fight against that. And and yeah, I mean, that's the strength of what we're doing here, right? Because we have a Jeff outside of that <laughs> left lane, that's it. And it's like, how do we win? Yeah, <laughs> and so, because we have the Captain Marvel, because we have, you know, different ways to, to really like you know a taskmaster at this point gets us to eight on any other two lanes which is big enough to win them at this point right so um even though preshawn's played everything in the peak it's like you still have plenty of ways to put power middle and right so um again not drawing the sarah and also throwing priority so that's actually the, the strength of it too right like preshawn still has priority even though all the power is stacked on the left right now this is exactly where you want to be if you're preshawn right your opponent didn't play sarah you have tons of ways to spread the power and you don't have prio so like you're not worried about the shame you're not worried about the like that so even interesting play with the Taskmaster because the you know no no risk of Shang Chi but Preshan able to take it moving on in the tournament. Yes, wonderfully bid played by both players. Absolutely fantastic games from both players. Um, maybe not the luckiest on the Sarah draws, but 
still played it exceptionally well, uh, despite the circumstances. So both players playing extremely well. Preshan will take that one and move on to the next round. Awesome. We're going to have Preshan come on over here to the uh, booth and have a quick chat afterwards. Uh, after this, we're going to be moving on to top eight, which is very exciting. Uh, like I said, very, very uh, sweaty gameplay so far. You should see everyone over on the uh, the tables just sitting down, heads down, playing their hearts out in, in Marvel Snap. Super, super exciting. Uh, exciting to get things moving along and popped over here. Uh, we'll get Preshan over here in just a minute after he logs out. But yeah, o overall, what do you think about that, that, the, the matchup that we saw there? I think it did come down to Sarah. I mean, the, I think the only game that we saw that Chaos Pro drew Sarah he was able to, to clinch out a victory, and, and before there was a, you know, it just felt really, really hard. Yeah, I think it was a close matchup. I mean, the decks were pretty evenly matched. They both have very distinct strengths against the other one. Like we mentioned earlier, it's kind of that mini game of, you know, how do I put enough power out on the board to be competitive on turn six, but still try to throw that priority? Uh, and I think that's what we saw in the very last game there, right? Like, Prishan had t so much power on the board, easy ways to spread it out, but still was able to throw, throw Pryo, so... Um, but yeah, no, I think the games were great. Like you mentioned earlier, everyone's heads down. Uh, uh -huh. The competition's really getting, as we get it's, closer it's crazy, to the finals. Man, it's yeah. crazy. So, no, it's been great. And I'm looking forward to the next round as well. Uh, yeah, we're going to have Preshan jump on for a quick interview after that exciting match. Yeah. They look cool. Uh -huh. Yeah. All right, Preshan, you had a wonderful match there against Chaos Pro. Tell me a little bit about your deck and the deck choice. I love the Hawkeye. I've, I haven't seen anyone run Hawkeye in a competitive deck. And it seemed to, uh, dude, we were talking about when you, you kind of dangled the nine power Hawkeye out, just wait, waiting for, for the Shang-Chi. So tell me a little bit about your, your deck choice. So I named the deck Go Big or Go Home. Oh. Sorry. I named the deck Go Big or Go Home. So basically I'm trying to go as big as I can. And Hawkeye is just that, that small touch that gets, no one expects it. So I, I put Hawkeye down, I think I put Hulkbuster on top, and then I know he's playing Killmonger, so every single match I'm going to put armor on Hawkeye every single time, and then just see what happens from there. So basically the deck is get big as I can, have that small Hawkeye or my small cards get big, and then just keep them guessing and just let Captain Marvel do the rest for me. Yeah, I was actually just going to bring up Captain Marvel because it seemed to be such an important part of so many of those games. You would kind of stack up one lane, mm -hmm. make this super powerful lane, get a 10 power Captain Marvel, mm -hmm. and then just stare at your opponent and say, hey, it's this Captain Marvel is going to do something, man. You figure it's it out. Up, right. It's, it's totally up to you. And the goal is to have them have priority, too. That way you avoid the Shang-Chi, too. So it's like set it and forget it. Just put it on autopilot. I think I lost one because I didn't move Jeff. If I had mm. moved Jeff to the left, then I, I would have won that match. But it, that's that's basically it. So that's the way it goes sometimes, man. You know, you, you you're sitting there and you're calculating a million different plays. Do you want to tell me a little bit about kind of like your uh, based on that matchup? You know, looking a, a, across from a Sarah deck that has some really cool control tools, a lot of control tools that are actually kind of like uh, target your deck pretty hard. How did you deal with snapping patterns and when to choose how to snap and try and you know get uh, get Chaos Pro to invest some cubes in the match? So. Basically, he was playing Nova, <laughs> so anytime I, I felt like he was going to put a one drop somewhere I, or a Nova or X-23 somewhere, I put my armor on it. Or I'll go really tall in one lane and then I'll just let the Captain Marvel do the rest. So basically it's like, all right, he's playing Killmonger, I just need to safeguard my Kitty Pride. I need to safeguard my arrow, I need to have him have priority, and then I can do the rest from there. I can maneuver where I need cards to go. Yeah, yeah, and it's, it seemed good. I mean, I think that you were, you kind of, uh, you won that you won that match by kind of like, you know, death by a thousand cuts, just <laughs> getting just a little bit enough ahead right. to, to, to throw off Chaos Pro's confidence to, to try and go into that last round. Uh, and I, I think that that's a huge thing with Marble Snap. On turn four and five, setting yourself up that your opponent doesn't really know how they're going to the, find a win condition against you and either make them, you know, risk it really, really hard or, or go for it. And I, I think you did a great job with that. Right, especially a tournament play. Like, you don't know how aggressive someone snap, <laughs> snaps are. Mm -hmm. So when he snapped, I was like, okay, all right. Like, I, I think I got it. But when some, it, it's crazy because I'm a quick player. Like, I'm a more like, do boom, 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 mm -hmm. go. So when someone takes so much time it's like crap what do they know what i don't know like 
throws oh. you out of your element a little bit. Right. It's like, dude, like, what are you doing? What are you doing? What? Are you, like, so the nerves are just going. They're like, crap. Should I snap? Should I have not snapped? Like, or I think one one game I snapped maybe turn one, turn two. As soon as I put armor down, like, I snapped. I, I knew I had it. Yeah. Well, and, and what's really cool is that you, you were able to win without really ever hitting your big line that you aim for with the deck of getting that giant mm -hmm. kitty and going kitty into Taskmaster. It, right. it seemed like, you know, you found that it, it, that line was there a couple of times, but you, you found like some some alternate line or, mm -hmm. or alternative lines that even puts put some more pressure on. So how, how do you deal with that? Like um, trying to go for a different line than that, you know, very purest line of, of, of kitty, uh, kitty Shuri, and, the, and then trying to do kitty Taskmaster. It, to it's trying not to be Telegraph. So that's why Hawkeye is in this deck just so he could get a little bit bigger than than normal mm -hmm. so basically it's like all right they know they know the the typical line so it's like can i play mid-range and still beat them mid-range so especially the last match i try to go mid-range as much as i can even out the the power and look every location and then just let it go from there Wonderful. Well, congratulations. Good luck Thank in top you. eight. I'll, I'll get you. out of Thank your hair and let you, you start moving on. Can we get a little, little round of applause for Prey Sean and Chaos Pro? Wonderful, oh, yeah. wonderful match.